2611 mastermind Hafiz Saeed didn't waste any time after his release. He has hit the ground running to further spread his anti-India propaganda. In a speech after his release, he threatened to carry out more attacks against India in the name of Islam. But the United States is turning the screws on Pakistan. It wants to see Saeed arrested. So which way will Pakistan lean? Take a look at this next report. Despite massive outrage, Hafiz Saeed, one of the most wanted terrorists in South Asia, was released on Friday from house arrest for the third time. Amid the celebrations, Hafiz Saeed made his agenda clear to the world. He spewed more venom and threatened more attacks against India and around the world. But there is something else on Hafiz Saeed's mind. With the support of the Pakistani establishment, he is seeking an image makeover. There is strong speculation that Saeed will take charge of the Milli Muslim League, a political offshoot of terrorist organization Jamaat ud -Dawa. Leaders of the Milli Muslim League have backed Hafiz Saeed's leadership. In an interview to the New York Times in September, the League's campaign manager Navid Kamar said Hafiz Saeed will lead the party once he is released from house arrest. And Hafiz Saeed has taken a professional approach towards his political outfit. On its website, the Milli Muslim League boasts itself as a party of ideals with a promise of well-qualified and accomplished leadership for Pakistan. But these ambitious plans could be derailed by the Americans. In a statement today, the US State Department asked the Pakistani government to make sure Hafiz Saeed is behind bars. The State Department said Saeed remains a global terrorist facing US sanctions the U.S. expressed deep concerns over his release and demanded his immediate arrest. So far, the Pakistani establishment has been turning a blind eye to Hafiz Saeed, but with Washington putting pressure on Islamabad, can diplomacy bring Hafiz Saeed to justice? Bureau Report, we are. And joining me this evening to talk more about that story is uh, Ambassador Vivek Kachu, the former Indian diplomat. He's joining in from Delhi. Good evening, uh, Ambassador Kachu. Thanks very much for speaking with us here at Vion. The United States has expressed concern about the fact that uh, Hafiz Saeed has been allowed to walk out of, out of uh, house arrest. But are words enough alone, especially when you're coming to deal with uh, a country such as Pakistan? Uh, words are clearly not enough. In fact, I very much fear that uh, the United States is returning to its old policy where there is a dichotomy between its words and its actions. You know that uh, some time ago in the U.S. Congress, a distinction was drawn between the Haqqani network and the lashkar e -Toyba. Yes. And news reports indicate that that distinction was on account of the pressures of uh, the U.S. administration and therefore the linkage of U.S. assistance in some respects is now with Pakistani cooperation with regard to the Haqqani network and there is nothing on the lashkar e -Toyba in that. Now, this shows that while these words are very welcome mm -hmm. of the State mm -hmm. Department, yet the Pakistanis will take them and uh, will take these words in their stride and will focus more on U.S. action. Uh, clearly, that action is wanting and the absence of action, the distinction drawn between the Haqqani network and the lashkar e -Toyba in a meaningful way has obviously encouraged Pakistan to allow Hafiz Saeed to be out of house arrest. Sir, do you also find it unfortunate that India has to, uh, I wouldn't say rely, but at least have this expectation from Washington that it will weigh in when it comes to people like Hafiz Saeed, that it will make stern statements on the LET, on the JUD, and numerous other organizations that work with impunity within Pakistan. Why can't India's word enough be alone when it comes to talking about designating and making sure that people like Hafiz Saeed are brought to task for... Uh, the numerous heinous crimes that can be attributed to the man. Look, uh, the 
Hafiz Saeed and his organization has also been responsible for the murder of U.S. nationals. For instance, during the 26-11 Mumbai attack and the anniversary of that attack is only two days from now. So, uh, I think it is also that impending anniversary that has propelled uh, the U.S. State Department to make up uh, these noises. Of course, it is unfortunate that the United States is acting in this fashion. India knows and knows well that when it comes to action against international terrorists, everyone, including the United States, adopts a selective approach. Right. And, uh, but one last sentence, one had hoped that the August 21st statement of President Trump had indicated that the U.S. will now uh, shed this dichotomy between talk and action. But in the recent past, it seems that the U.S. is reverting back to its old policy. All right, stay with me, Ambassador Kaju. Joining us uh, this evening from uh, Washington is Raymond E. Vickery, the former junior U U.S. Assistant Secretary of Commerce and Trade Development. He's also an author and an advisor on U.S.-India relations. Also with us this evening from Islamabad is Vion's uh, Pakistan Bureau Chief Taha Siddiqui. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you both for joining in on the conversation. Raymond, if I can come to you first. Uh, this statement from the United States State Department is uh, diplomatically correct, but you know, there's no no else missing from that statement. There's no ultimatum. There's no be prepared for fire of, and fury from the United States. Do you think that that caveat, so to speak, is missing from uh, this statement and Pakistan's just going to make a full utilization of that? Well, I think there's a lot of work to be done between the United States and India as close partners in regard to terrorism from wherever it uh, comes. I think that uh, from uh, the top on down, uh, President Trump uh, and uh, the Department of State, Rex Tillerson, uh, that that is uh, the policy of the United States. Unfortunately, in terms of the implementation of that policy, uh, not everything uh, is perfect. First of all, uh, Pakistan and is a sovereign country, and you just can't go in there and start a major war uh, immediately. That having been said, uh, the previous administration, the Obama administration, placed a $10 million uh, bounty on Saeed for the information leading to his arrest. What happened uh, in regard to the Congress on the LA LET is very unfortunate and shows the need for greater cooperation and coordination within the U.S. government. Uh, that LET reference was uh, was changed. Uh, my understanding is at the instance of lower level people at the Department of Defense who were uh, concentrating on Afghanistan. But India has much more to do as well. Uh, you know, there are people in India that if you talk about the U.S. and India as allies, they run for the exit. They don't want to be known as allies. If you talk about terrorism uh, from Iran, they don't want to talk about uh, terrorism from Iran. The fact is terrorism has to be fought, whether it's in Pakistan, whether it's coming from Iran, whether it's in, in Afghanistan, whether it's in Kashmir or wherever, wherever it is. But the United States and India, as the two greatest democracies in the world, are going to need to move closer and closer together, not just in words, but in terms of military interoperability. You know, that's been proposed on several occasions by the U.S., and uh, a lot of that has not been taken up. There have been exercises, Project uh, Malabar in the Indian Ocean and so forth. But we need to be much closer. We need to be uh, allies, if you will, in regard to the fight on terrorism. Right. Uh, stay with me, uh, Raymond. Let me go across to my colleague, Taha Siddiqui. Taha, you know, uh, it's all well and uh, good to say that uh, the United States wants uh, uh, Hafiz Saeed to be arrested once again and brought to book for the charges against him. But what exactly does that mean? What exactly does Pakistan need to do for uh, charges to be uh, placed against Hafiz Saeed once again, when in fact it's, been, it's failed to provide evidence to that effect already once before? 
Well, uh, if you remember uh, back in 2011, uh, you know, there was this house arrest of Hafiz Saeed that happened and there was this whole, you know, again around about nine, 11, 10 or 11 months, uh, the whole episode went on. Uh, and at that time he was arrested, uh, uh, similar sort of conditions where he was house arrested, eventually he filed a petition at the Lahore High Court and their government eventually could not prove why they should keep him under house arrest. Uh, and the judiciary let him go. So this is a repeat of that that we've already seen uh, in 2011. This is repeating again uh, now in uh, 2017 with a different government. At that time, it was a different government. But that's basically what it, it would mean even if right now, uh, if, for example, Pakistan accepts the demands of the United States or, uh, you know, comes under that pressure, uh, the, the government has the power to issue a fresh detention order and that fresh detention order will then be uh, perhaps, uh, you know, the courts will be intervened, but the courts will be engaged by the Jamaat Dawa lawyer. Uh, but the government can do that and then put him under house arrest. But the bigger question here is that whether or not this house arrest means anything. Sure, that is a, that is an interesting point and an important, uh, pertinent one. Uh, Ambassador Kaju, um, do you think also the problem here is the fact that both the military and the civilian leadership in Pakistan look upon Hafiz Saeed as uh, somebody who can, uh, you know, garner in the vote bank. He's uh, immensely popular for uh, his quote-unquote uh, philanthropic work in uh, Pakistan. We've seen huge number of people gather after his release. Is the military and the civilian leadership almost competing to get uh, Hafiz Saeed onto their side? Look, Hafiz Saeed is an instrument of the Pakistan state against India and periodically he acts in Afghanistan too. But certainly his orientation is towards India. And because he has is an instrument, he has been allowed to grow into the monster that he has become. Uh, the philanthropic activity is merely a cover for the most outrageous terrorism that he is committed to and that his organization uh, undertakes. Let us not forget what happened on 26-11 in Mumbai where American nationals also died. So this kind of talk fills me with dismay that India must act in a certain way to persuade the United States to take meaningful action. And I stress the word action against the lashkar e -Toyba. The United States has put a bounty of 10 million on Hafiz Saeed's head and he is allowed to roam around freely. And the United States having issued that bounty sits on its haunches, not doing anything. Sure. It brings the United States into disrespect when there is such a wide difference between what it proclaims, between the uh, act, between such bounty and the actual action it takes. Obviously, no one is expecting the United States to launch an all-out war on Pakistan, against Pakistan. But the United States has instrumentalities, and President Trump had warned. Uh, Pakistan on August 21st and later senior echelons of the US government have repeated those warnings and in those warnings while there is greater emphasis on uh, the Haqqani network and on action against uh, Afghanistan oriented Pakistani terrorist groups there is equally a mention of the lashkar e -Toyba. Absolutely. Hikri, would this. you like to react to that? Uh, and I'd just like to add a little bit on to that. Uh, the fact is also for people sitting in India who are facing the brunt of Pakistan-based terrorism, uh, it does seem a bit ironic that the United States would uh, choose to uh, designate North Korea a state sponsor of terror. The fact that the United States didn't think much of Pakistan's territorial integrity when it came to going in to take out Osama bin Laden. That the United States has a $10 million bound on the man who walked out today of jail and utilized the opportunity to spew venom to uh, to ask his carder to continue the fight or against uh, India in the bloodiest way possible. Would you uh, would you agree that Indians have reason to be concerned about their relationship with the United States? Well, of course they do, and the United States has reason to be concerned about its relationships with India. 
But that's no excuse for not trying to pull the U.S. and India closer together in terms of effective operations. Now, the question is, what do you want to, to have happen? Do you want the United States to come in and bomb Saeed and start that going on? Is that what is wanted here? Now, maybe it will come to that. Maybe that's what uh, needs to be done uh, eventually, if there is no further action taken. But the ultimate, but an ultimate goal here is to be able to eliminate terrorism and to bring peace in the world. It's not to posture that somebody else is being uh, less than forthcoming or is being hypocritical. It, those kinds of charges can be made against any government including India. All you have to do is look at what happened is in regard to India and Iran. What happens in regard uh, to India in regard to things that it does not consider to be its core interest. Now, we need to be able to resolve those, but that it requires working together rather than pointing fingers uh, at one another. I'm hopeful that we'll be able uh, to get Saeed back uh, out of action. Uh, and I think the speaker from Pakistan is very well taken. Uh, what does it mean to be under house arrest? Is that enough to keep him from doing the kinds of nefarious things that he has been doing? But one must remember that Pakistan is not a unitary actor. There are people within Pakistan and powerful people who are very much against Saeed who do not want to, uh, to have this, uh, this policy that he has uh, mouthed in terms of uh, hostility toward India. So what can be done in order to be able to bring about the kind of results we want, which will be a peaceful and prosperous South Asia and a peaceful and prosperous world? And for that, it seems that the two greatest democracies on the face of the earth have to be able to cooperate more closely rather than just accuse each other of hypocrisy and not living up to their word. All right, Ambassador Kachu, would you like to respond? Uh, is the onus on the relationship between India and the United States and not on Pakistan to actually act on, uh, on people like Hafiz Saeed? Uh, look, uh, I think the points made by our American colleague are very well taken, of course. There has to be greater dialogue, and I think that is uh, going on. I sir, permit me a personal reference. I served in the in our embassy in the United States 30 years ago, and I know that those, of course, those were times of the Cold War. And, but I know that at that stage we were accusing each other. We don't do that now. But certainly among friends, and the U.S. and India are friends now. They are committed to each other. Uh, there can be the mention of disappointment, and that is what I'm mentioning at the moment. If the United States is concerned about India's relations with Iran, of course the United States should uh, speak frankly and candidly with us. Sure. I will not take that amiss, and I think no one in, in India will take that amiss. But on Hafiz Saeed, it's good that this action has been, uh, that this statement has been made, but it is not enough for uh, for the uh, for action in the U.S. Congress on getting the Lashkar off the hook to be attributed to lower level functionaries. After all, what are senior functionaries for? But to overrule lower level functionaries. I wanted to take some uh, some of that across to Taha, but unfortunately we've run out of time completely on this segment. I'll have to uh, leave it at that, gentlemen. Uh, Raymond E. Vickery, Ambassador Kachu, and of course Taha Siddiqui, thank you all uh, for joining us this evening and sharing your perspectives uh, with us. Before we move on, though, it was a moving sight that of thousands of Pakistanis turning up to greet, who else, their favorite son, Hafiz Muhammad Saeed. They didn't come empty-handed. No, in fact, they brought two cakes dripping with chocolate, which their revered philanthropist tucked into with much gusto. Weon has now accessed the cake's secret recipe, a secret of Pakistan's most famous bakery, La Hafizeri. Now, make sure you note down the ingredients. They're guaranteed to make your taste buds explode. The world's most wanted terrorist, Hafiz Saeed, is a free man. 
No surprises that after jailing him briefly for the sake of the media, Pakistan released and then turned out in large numbers to greet its favourite son with a luscious cake from the country's deadliest delicatessen, aptly named La Hafizuri. Cooks needed months of training from the best khansamas of both the ISI and the Pakistan Army to bake it. But Vion has gained access to its secret recipe and is pleased to share it with our viewers. So what goes into Laha Fisari's secret cake? Two kilos of very fine TNT, two sticks of dynamite, add a third for extra zip, one cup of nitroglycerine or any oily hydrocarbon, two cups of baking soda and 17 eggs from any Pakistan army poultry farm. These come free for Lashkar's charity work, quote-unquote. Five to six ribbons of Semtex or any other plastic explosive, five cups of chocolate syrup and steroids for sprinkling. While the oven is getting hot enough to explode, pour the cake mixture into a cauldron. Trainee cooks to stir it with Kalashnikovs. These lend a special smoky flavour to the volatile gâteau. Bake for 45 minutes or till the bayonet comes clean. Remove, cool. Smother in chocolate syrup and sprinkle liberally with steroids. Carefully paste Semtex strips in a V for victory to the beloved leader. Ensure the boys eat six inch slices before crossing the border. Dear viewers, we hope you like the cake all the way from La Hafizari, the world's deadliest delicatessen located in Pakistan. Euro Report Beyond.